Hey guys, welcome back to the channel TechBeast.org. I am uh, glad to see you in my part two of this video. Okay, so in case if you have missed the part one section where we have completely uh, and clearly explained what is BACnet and what are the functions and what are all the requirements if you want to use a BACnet standard for uh, your IoT applications. Okay, so in case if you have missed uh, part one, so please check out the link in the description. Just go there, watch part one and come here so that you'll get a clear understanding about uh, what is BACnet and how it is working. Okay, so this is a part two, as I said. So this is completely going to be an hands-on uh, video. Okay, so uh, let's get into the session directly. So this is going to be our setup, as I uh, explained earlier in my part one. Okay, so we are going to use a, a software, free software called Ape. It's available for both Windows and Linux. But for simplicity, I'm just going to use and install it in my Windows machine. Okay, so basically, I'm just going to simulate a backnut sensor okay backnet device in my windows so my windows machine is going to be a backnet device and i'm going to write a simple client program which you can run anywhere even you can just run it in your uh, laptop or you have your uh, you can run it in your mac even you can run it in your raspberry pi to uh, collect the data or backnet ip okay to read the data or backnet ip so anything is fine so now uh, this is going to be the setup okay so we have we will use uh, ape software and we will use back zero python module okay so let's just uh, straight away get into the session and let's get our hands dirty. So just log on to sourceforge.net under projects. You can see it another BACnet Explorer software here. Okay. So all you need is uh, just click download. Okay. So you have different um, uh, flavors here, Linux, Windows, Android, and all those uh, versions are available here. You can read uh, more in details about, uh, uh, about these softwares. Okay. So now uh, let's straight away download the software. Okay. So once it is, uh, you'll see your download will uh, start shortly. And once you're finished uh, downloading, you can straight away install the software. Okay, so here you can see my uh, the software is uh, getting downloaded. It, it's it's uh, it's fine because uh, Windows will ask you to trust the software. Okay, so all you need is just uh, uh, keep the software and just trust it. Okay, so then straight away it will. Uh, download it will be downloaded in your local uh, folder okay so now you can check your downloads folder you can see the ape software available and all you need is just double click and install it so here i have already installed it in my uh, laptop so now if you want to uh, run the software just uh, search the directory so you can see ape directory in your uh, install installation path so just for uh, quick access you can just uh, type ape and it will be displayed so now you can uh, straight away run the software just uh, uh, click uh, launch the ape software and you can able to uh, see the software uh, in a while okay so it's uh, it's loading so let's wait for a while okay so the the software has been uh, successfully loaded here so this is going to be our uh, simple backnet interface where we will be monitoring what and all the backnet devices connected and what are all the um, uh, properties and objects available for the corresponding device and all those details so now we just need to simulate a device right as i said so using abe it's pretty simple so all you need is just uh, go to the add on okay so then you can just uh, click a backnet room simulator so this backnet room simulator will simulate a device for you so you can see here room uh, control simulator so you can see the temperature uh, it's, it's getting varied okay so you can see different uh, uh, values here so it's like comfort echo uh, plus vacancy and all those okay that's that's not our point actually so here uh, we are simulating a backnet device ultimately now okay so now you can just go to your ape software just click add device okay you can just this is a local uh, this is the local host uh, a local host uh, ip address of my machine so okay so just uh, find the ip address of your current device so just uh, if it, if you are using windows uh, just type ip config you can able to see the ip address of your machine so in my case it is 192.168.18.10 here okay so that's why i just uh, gave that ip here so then uh, port number is uh, back zero so if you just convert it into a decimal uh, it's basically 47808 so backnet basically uses uh, as i already told in my previous video backnet default uh, port is uh, to connect to is 47808 so just um, let it be back zero and you can just click add so now by default right you can see the device uh, getting detected here our room simulator is already detected here so you can see the device here it's running on um, uh, ip address 192.168.18.10 and port number is 53522 okay so that is where you can access this backnet device so now you can see there are different uh, inputs available analog input analog input 0 analog input 1 analog input 2 all those values you can see so you can just drag and drop here if you want to see more in detail just drag and drop it here 
analog input 1 it's a temperature indoor temperature water then analog input 2 here so this is a temperature outdoor so basically these are all the values so, so there are other values which you can uh, take a look so basically as i said uh, these are all the objects analog input is the object name as you see here when i when i choose the analog um, object you can see here the backnet properties okay so basically when i just uh, double click uh, you can see the uh, values here and the time what is the status and all those things so you can see the list of backnet property available here the description so for example this is the outdoor temperature right so the description is outdoor event state object type out of service present values what reliability so these are all the properties okay so so this is what we clearly explained in uh, part one okay so so these are all the properties you can see here so now uh, so now you have simulated a, a backnet device okay this is pretty cool and easy right so now let's uh, straight away get into our python module we write a simple python module we read all these analog one two and three values okay and just make it as a json to support this iot uh, standard nowadays okay all the data formats will be in json so we will be just reading this analog input zero one two we will connect to this room controller simulator via the port 53522 okay then we will read all these analog um, input values we all read all these objects and uh, we will get the present value okay so let's um, write our python module now so back zero this is what the python module i was talking about and we are going to use uh, this python module to uh, connect to the backnet simulator device and read the object and its properties okay so just go to google and type back zero you can uh, just access this website uh, it will take you to the back zero dot uh, read the docs.io so this documentation is uh, pretty clear so basically uh, as you can see here when creating the connection to the network back zero needs to know the ip network of the interface on which it will work okay so in my case uh, my local uh, ip subnet is 192.168.1.x uh, 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 okay so it can be anything so i can it's a slash 24 subnet and i can able to uh, connect to nearly 254 um, IPs I can able to access okay so it also needs to know the subnet mask as I said okay so you can always check your uh, subnet and the list of uh, usable IPs within your subnet range by uh, going to this website cidr.xyz okay so in my case this is my subnet so 192.168.18.6 uh, uh, slash 24 so so six is my uh, mission which i'm going to run as a client to read the backnet uh, simulated data so here you can see my first usable ip is dot one and last usable ip is dot two five four so so this is going to be my subnet okay so uh, backnet basically needs to know this uh, subnet in order to connect and read the data okay so uh, we are going to use backnet uh, back zero light here as we don't need to have a, a web interface okay so all you need is uh, just uh, use a backnet equal to back zero dot light and you can provide the ip address and the port number okay including the subnet mask then you can able to connect it so let's uh, straight away i will show you the uh, code okay so the code is already pushed in uh, github you can just uh, go to uh, techbees dash org's github page and under backnet ip you can see the code okay so just uh, directly type pip install uh, the requirement docs dot text and you can run this read data dot py uh, we are good to go okay so let me just uh, show you the code now so i have already cloned the repository here okay so basically this is what uh, available inside the code so we are using back zero module as i said okay so basically here we are creating a backnet connection so 192.168.18.6 is my current uh, machine which i'm going to um, use uh, to connect to my uh, backnet simulator okay which is running on uh, 18.10 on the port 53522 okay so here you can specify if you don't specify the port number uh, by default four zone eight zero eight will be taken so i just uh, for um, a sake of clean explanation eight zero eight since we are already using in that machine so eight zero nine we can just put it under this subnet uh, okay so i'm just declared a, a data okay so it's going to be a dictionary here okay so i'm just um, uh, defined a main function so while true so there is a for loop so we are going to read as i said three uh, objects right analog input 0 1 and 2 so that's what the range 0 comma 3 i just uh, put so uh, we are going to convert it into string okay so here we are connecting to the backnet simulator 192.168.18.10 on the port 53522 so here the object name is analog input id is basically 0 1 and 2 okay and we are reading the property present value that's it so then you are uh, creating a variable uh, value and you are converting it to string and you are creating a 
uh, dictionary here okay so now uh, every five seconds now i'm just uh, going to pull the uh, backnet simulator okay so now you can just straight away run the program run without uh, debugging you can see the outputs below so now you see uh, backnet device has been simulated here okay so now let's wait for our backnet uh, data to be okay so let's wait for a while so I think my uh, windows has locked off. Okay, so now it's logged in now. So, okay, so you can see here the data. Uh, every five seconds, we are querying the data from the backnet simulator. So analog input zero is 21.1 degree and analog input one is 39 degree and analog input two is 12 degree. So, okay, so that's what we saw in the um, backnet uh, simulator section. Okay, just now. So like this, you can uh, query uh, as much as of uh, the data you want. You can specify the list of uh, ports. You can specify the list of objects you want, and you can uh, specify the list of properties. And you can finally append everything into a single uh, JSON dictionary or arrays as per your need. Okay. So that's it. So this is uh, pretty cool, right? So that's how you can able to um, connect and read data from the backnet device. So thanks for watching guys uh, please subscribe to the channel if you do uh, like my videos please share with your friends okay and uh, just get your hands dirty grab a raspberry pi or just follow uh, techbeast-org's github page and just try it out the code and please do share your comments uh, in the below comment section and we are glad to receive your feedback okay so let's make technology easy pc for everyone and have a good day